The True SDX radio came in, came in from an Amazon order just like this with this uh, write up on how to program your call sign into the firmware, which we'll do shortly. And it came in this uh, nice package. And the first thing you notice is that this thing is quite small. That's the size of somebody's palm there, and it's not that big. Uh, the little screen is pretty small. And this little fellow right here is a crossover onto a BNC, which is what we're gonna use. So the next thing you notice, of course, is this little cable, which should be the power cable that fits there. The one thing though, though is they leave us these two connectors, which we're gonna go ahead and uh, put power pole connectors on. So that's what we're gonna do first. Let's go ahead and put on some power poles and then see if we can uh, go to the next step. Okay, so what we've done now is we've put on Anderson power poles onto our power cable. So now we get a battery. In this case, I've got uh, 18 650 cells, six of them, three in parallel with three. Connect that. And now before we plug it in, We'll go ahead and connect an antenna. And now let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. Pushing down the connector and lowering down the knob goes ahead and lowers the volume. So we push down on the knob and push up or click up or click down to change the volume. So now we're ready to go ahead and delve more into the inner workings of this device, but it seems like it's, it's working okay straight out of the box. So we'll go from there. For this part of the True SDX configuration, we are going to program our call sign to the firmware. So following the sheet that was included with our True SDX that came in from Amazon, we have to access a website. So we bring up a web browser and I'm gonna go ahead and type in everything that Manuel put on his sheet. DL2 man, uh, 3B, actually true SDX, 3B dash, true SDX dash firmware. As soon as I do that, I come up with this hyperlink, which is, Apparently DL2 man's firmware downloads page and scrolling down, I did notice that it asks to load the bootloader first. I think it's already been done since I purchased this through Amazon. So I'm going to skip this part and go scroll down a little bit more. And then it here says, enter your serial number and optional call sign in the form below. Well, reading the information that came with this true SDX from Amazon, the serial number is actually on the page, actually not on the page, on the wrapper itself of the device, of the transceiver. Serial numbers, a whole string of numbers and a couple of letters put in there, capital letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter this, being careful to use the capital uh, lock, capital letter lock, and also enter my call sign and then download the firmware. So. Let me go ahead and pause this recording and enter my serial number and call sign. In your case, you would do the same thing with your respective serial number and call sign. So let me pause now. After clicking download, we essentially have our firmware here. So that's been downloaded. Now, as the page tells us, we go ahead and next have to do this software download for AVR Dudes. So we click on that. That's the software that we're going to be downloading for the next step for actually writing the firmware. So let's go ahead and get the latest. We save that one and we save the file. Done. Open it. And at this point, we're just downloading the software. We default to English as the language, accept the agreement, next, next, 
abr.s, whatever, create a desktop shortcut, sure, so we can easily find it. Next, install. And uh, it's finished. So now when he launches, he will come up. Oh, there he goes. Took a little bit, but it's good. So as per <clears throat> Manuel's instructions, select a programmer. We want to go ahead and use Arduino. And then we say over here for MCU, we put in 80 mega 328p. So there he is, 80 mega 328p. Select him and we don't change anything else. We have to select and there is that one. So we open it. We make sure that the port is selected, device manager, and we see the ports right here. So we're going to ports com LPT. And at this point now we plug in the USB port connector. Now be careful because there's a little bit of a directionality to the plug onto the TrueSDX. As soon as we do that, we see this device right here on COM3. So that is the device that he talks about here, USB driver for CH340. So on my computer that was already there. And uh, so there we go. So now when we do this, we say COM3 and we select a baud rate of 115,200. Okay, so nothing else needs to be added. We leave AT Mega 328P and we click program. At this point, the program is writing. The radio is not showing any difference at this time. Now it's reading it. And now the radio has restarted and it is showing my call sign on the radio screen. So that's as simple as it gets. It's, uh, you can hear the radio in the background. It has actually been reset. So it's uh, back to default settings, it seems. Uh, it went back from S scale down to uh, DBM scale, for example. So, and uh, it's uh, defaulting again to 7.074 megahertz usb so it's uh it's as before so that concludes the uh the writing of this uh this firmware